the f***? So what happened this time? Oh, you're familiar with the concept of peer pressure, right? Yeah, that's what it was. It was peer pressure. Chickpea. Chickpea said to me, you know, superhero, you're okay, but you don't hold a candle to Batman. What is it with chicks? You know, and it bothered me, it bothered me all day. I was thinking about it all day, and I drove around, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't fight crime. I had it on my mind, you know? So, finally I hopped in the Spudmobile, and I drove out to Gotham. I couldn't take it anymore. I looked around, I searched everywhere. I searched all the hangouts, and the dive bars, and the crime alleys, and stuff. And Well, I finally found them, lurking on a rooftop hanging out near some gargoyles, looking all stoic and stuff. And, um, well, I did it. I, uh, I held the candle to him. I, I really don't remember what happened after that. Could this be the end of Starchy the Dark Spud, grim defender of Alphabet City? Has he come to his last moments? Tune in next week. Same Spud time. Same spud channel. The end of... How could this be the end of Star... This is just my first adventure. Did the... Did the doctor say something I need to know about, or... Space, the final frontier. Oh, oh wait, uh, Alphabet City, my latest frontier. These are the adventures of Starchy the Dark Spud. His never-ending mission, to seek out crime and smack it on the bottom. To act really cool and lurk around gargoyles on dark rooftops and stuff. To boldly wear a cape, even though it's after Labor Day and capes, they're really not in fashion anymore. You can't be serious. Picard is a way better captain than Kirk. Picard dealt with the Borg. Yeah? Well, when Captain Kirk wants an egg, he cracks a chicken. That's ridiculous. Picard is outsmarted Q for crying out loud. Kirk once ripped a Romulan in half just to see what he had for lunch. No, he did not. You're being obstinate. And once, Kirk destroyed a Klingon battlecruiser just by pointing his finger and saying, Bang! Stop. 
What episode was that? You know, there's only two types of women in the galaxy. Those who want to sleep with Jim Kirk, and those who want to sleep with him again. Who wants to sleep with that bald French guy? Maybe Riker. You insult the man who laughed when stabbed in the chest as a cadet? Yeah. Well, Jim Kirk once inhaled a seagull. Now you're just being ridiculous. Your arguments don't even make sense. There is a wrong way to eat a Reese's cup, but only Captain Kirk knows what that is. Don't even get me started on the captain's log. Oh my. Well, Inspector, we found him, the officer said. He was lying in a pool of his own blood. They never learn, I replied, chuckling. What do you mean, Inspector? Well, I mean, if you ever come across a pool of your own blood, you might want to avoid laying in it. Never ends well. He looked at me perplexed. Do you have any idea how many times we found someone lying in a pool of their own blood and they ended up being perfectly fine? Zero, officer. The answer is zero. He began walking away, shaking his head. The same goes with shallow graves, I called out to him. Don't lay in them either. recognize patterns if they ever want to become detectives. Hey, Fry, I was watching that movie yesterday. You know, the one where Smith and Jones keep tabs on aliens living here on Earth? Yeah. They had this little flashy stick that made people forget. And I thought that would make an awesome crime fighting tool. I would imagine so if it were real. But I built one. It works perfect. Seriously? How did you figure it out? No idea. I can't even remember why I built it. Huh. So I'm sensing you tested it? I wonder where I put that. I'm guessing it's someplace safe. Just great. What, what, what were we talking about again?
call me Calvert. <laughs> And I would have got away with it if it wasn't for those meddling spuds. Farvig Newton. This place is nice, Fry. When did you move here? This is your house, Sturge. And keep us safe from the Irish. Amen. Oh, and God, how do I get people to subscribe to my YouTube channel? Are you really going to wear that and get up to bed? Yes, sir. Always do. So, uh, about the YouTube subscribers. You're going to choke yourself with that cape. You realize that, right? Look, I need to be ready to fight crime at a moment's notice. Commissioner Fries wouldn't understand if I was late because I had to get dressed. The knot in the back of the bat mask has got to be uncomfortable. And boots, seriously. God, subscribers, YouTube. Here, funny, you'll figure it out. Oh, I'm not much of a computer guy. Oh, and one more thing, this election. Oh no, you're not sucking me into that. I never talk about politics or religion. But Mr. Strange, you've lost the use of 998 of your eyes. And if your condition worsens, we may have to amputate them. Just kidding, your lucky number is 327. You must learn to see with your other eyes. You mean the two on my head? No, your other eyes. What, these? No, your other other eyes. How, how do I do that? Dude, what the f***? Oh, I gotta put in an escalator. The bloated thorax of Rosie O'Donnell. What are you doing, Starch? Oh, I'm trying to cast a magic spell. You know, like Benjamin Cucumberbatch in that new movie. But I'm not having a lot of luck. Are you just making up your own incantations? Yeah, but they're well thought out. Like this one. By the insidious scrot fuzz of Gary Busey. What are you trying to achieve? Teleportation? Maybe turn the city inside out? Get the lid off this pickle jar. Oh, for crying out loud, give it to me. <laughs> I loosened it! It worked! Yeah, you should be on Jimmy Kimmel. The last person I opened a pickle jar for took credit to. Pew! Oh, 
Nice to meet you, Mr. Cucumber Batch. We couldn't find your name anywhere in the registry. We had a hard time finding you. That's because that name is just a facade, but a ruse to hide my true identity. My name is Quan. Quan! Yeah, that's why I don't use my real name. Oh, crap. Just broke reality. Well, there's two whole realities left. Maybe they won't notice. Well, the boss had gas and it smelled so bad that I think he gave me cancer. Dog done died and the truck broke down. God bless Texas. I said, God bless Texas. That was Jimmy Joe Bob Skaggs Jr. And this is WYRU Listening, Buffalo's country music station. Preparing you for hell one song at a time. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that right there. Fixing that again. Candy is special. I mean, well, mm, complex, but I love her. Well, love is what matters. What is it about her that you love the most, son? Uh, pretty much whatever she tells me to love most. Doesn't pay to have an unapproved opinion around Candy. And she has nice legs. Oh, she sounds delightful. Where is she now? Oh, in the police station across the street. I'm waiting for her interrogation to be over. Oh my! Interrogation? Yeah, she threw me in a blender. The cops have a couple questions about that. Blender? You should be in the hospital. I was. I managed to get out with only some minor scrapes thanks to my spud-like reflexes. But she was already in custody when I got here. Are you sure you want to be with a woman who would throw you in a blender, young man? You know, my mom once said candy heart is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Actually, come to think of it, I haven't seen mom since then. Maybe I should ask candy about that. Y yeah, y y you can't. 
Uh, see, you can't just uh, throw your boyfriend into a blender uh, and, and get away with it. That's absurd, officer. I would never throw my boyfriend in a blender. How dare he ignore me? Yeah, uh, can you tell me where you were at uh, 10 a.m.? My apartment, waiting for Starchy to text. He hadn't texted me in two hours. I'll stab his eyes out. I think we're going to have to detain you for a while, uh, Mrs. Hart. But why, officer? My Pookie is in the hospital. I need to be by his side. Well, it's, uh, well, because it, it seems your heart is saying something completely different from what your, your, your mouth is. Why, officer, you must know that your heart can lie to you. <sighs> Could you do me an itsy bitsy favor, officer? And, mm, let me go? Wow, you, yeah, you, you did that, you did that pretty fast. Well, yes, this is a family cartoon. So, about that favor, officer. Yes, uh, well, uh, wow, please excuse my, my phrasing, my, my, my terminology, uh, I, uh, I don't think, uh, uh, I could do that, ma'am. Why, officer, is that a gun in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? Careful, my boyfriend will kick the jelly out of you. Yeah, I think we're done here. Looks like you got a little smudge on your frosting there, Officer Gold. So, I'm thinking you might want a protection order, a at least. Nah, I'm a crime fighter. Danger's my middle name. Actually, it isn't my real middle name. It's my secret identity middle name. Domingo Danger Spud. Uh, eh, do me a favor and keep that between us. No sweat. No, see, no, no one would uh, believe me. Anyway, I worry more about losing Candy than about her hurting me. I'm pretty resilient physically. Every time she says she wants to slip into something more comfortable, I assume she means the arms of another potato. Yeah, it might be best to uh, sleep with uh, one eye open uh, for for now. Oh, I usually sleep with at least fourteen eyes open. Yeah, do you think Domingo is realistic? I don't. I don't think I'm pulling off Domingo. Honestly, I, uh, I'm way too Idaho to make a believable Domingo. Maybe, uh, maybe Preston. Preston Danger Spud. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure yeah, I don't care. But uh, do me a favor and uh, avoid this precinct uh, next time you have a, a domestic you know, one of those uh, you know, uh, situations. Because my, my mind, yeah, it, it can't cope with uh, either of you. Hey, could you get a move on, you old prune? Uh, must go faster. Uh, must go faster. I uh, uh, must go faster.
so you're probably wondering where I've been this whole time. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I don't care. <sighs> Let's just say it took a little more than Starchy's spud-like reflexes to save him from the blender. <gasps> Thank you. <clears throat> I guess I was wrong about you. You really do have a heart. Whoa, whoa! Oh, whew. Landed on my arm. Could someone help me up before... <laughs> Could someone please call an ambulance? see a magic trick? Hmm. I've seen this trick. Say no. Hey, wanna know how I got these scars? Hmm. <laughs> Why so serious? <laughs> I hate when he watches that movie. He's insufferable for weeks afterwards. He doesn't seem that bad. What's he like normally? Rolls the toilet paper underneath. Holy mother of God! He's a monster! He thinks he's safe. Doesn't think we know his patterns. His vulnerabilities. We know where his girlfriend lives and how to get at his sidekick. He's faced one clown before, but soon he'll face the clown syndicate. There's more than one way to peel a potato. <laughs> Is that motor oil you're drinking? You got a problem with that. I mean, you're eating dirt. Um, I am a potato. And we, um, we prefer the term soil. Yes. 
Cerebus? You... You sound kind of far away and staticky. Cerebus is in hell. Or a Motel 8 somewhere in the Midwest. It's hard to tell. They look a lot the same. Especially the shower curtain. Oh, can you help me? I'm trying to lose my tired old image and become a more... I don't know, more... You mean, less of a complete and total dweeb? Weather! Yeah, yeah. The kind of hero that makes the fanboys empty their wallets in awe. Have you tried dark and gritty yet? You mean the whole berserker rage, gritted teeth thing? Uh, it's just not... I don't know, it's just not, you know, potato. You know what I mean? Nay, Cerebus is just trying to get you to hang up and go bother someone else. And the dental bill. Every two weeks, I need another layer of enamel for my molars. Okay. What about lighthearted and whimsical? Mm. No. I'm, I'm way too serious. Way, way too serious. You're a serious potato. Scissors, I win again. Yeah, What about a Keeper Sutherland slash Johnny Depp slash Donald Trump red state psycho all-American patriot with a bad boy pass? No, 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 no. That's the image I'm trying to lose. You were a bad boy, potato? Well, yeah, in junior high, I spent so much time in the principal's office, I qualified for conjugal visits. Uh, Let me tell you, that's a very tough image to lose. You got that right. Therabus won't be able to lose that image out of his head, even if he performs a prefrontal lobotomy on himself with a rusty grapefruit spoon. Ooh, grapefruit. Starty, why is the phone cord all wet again? Yeah, don't even worry about that. Do, do we have any grapefruit? Oh, we need to split up on the rounds tonight, Fry. Someone's freed the inmates from the nut hatch. Uh-oh. They're scattered across the city? Yeah. Larcenous legumes, sociopathic seeds, and all-around nasty nuts. Oh, 
Whoa! How long have you been up here posing dramatically? Off and on since Saturday. You really need to patrol more frequently. Saturday, I watched Sven Goulash. Sorry. So, who are you? My name is Graydon. I mainly deal in pain. No. So, any chance you're from Spain? Oh my eye! 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 You two! Oh, you do realize potatoes don't have spines, right? Oh man! But I must break you. Well, you gave me about a dozen black eyes, if that's any consolation. You're just trying to cheer me up. It's Central America. Wait, what, what Central America? Where I'm from! I don't know why everyone just assumes I'm from Spain. A totally different accent. Okay. So, what do you want? What? Oh, I want control of all the crime in Alphabet City. Oh, a politician, that's cool. You got my vote. Anyone that had spent days in dramatic poses just waiting to be noticed, yeah, that's what it takes. So, what are the hoses for? Oh, these? Yeah, they deliver a flood of oats into my system. Cool. Does that, like... Boost your strength? Nah. Roughage keeps me regular. In a world where Batman is a potato, but not as intelligent, or as graceful, or as irresistible to women as most potatoes, Starchy the Dark Spot, grim defender of Alphabet City, world seven billionth greatest detective, Along with his sidekick, Small Fry, they manage to get startlingly little accomplished crime-fighting-wise, but say a lot of really stupid and hilarious things. It's a good thing I talked him into running for mayor. Turns out he was planning to release a toxin that would immobilize everyone except for their mouths and maybe one arm for expression. Can you imagine? That would be horrible. I know, right? just wondering, any chance I could get one of those cool magical weapons that some of the other superheroes got, like Thor's got that hammer, Wonder Woman's got that lasso, I think there's somebody who got a magic sword once, maybe that's King Arthur, I don't know, I don't pay enough attention in school, but hey, listen, I'd love to have some kind of cool spud-like super weapon that'll help me fight crime. Uh, you got anything up there? Hey, God? Um, are you listening at all? Hey, weapons? I'm sorry, but all operators are currently busy with other customers. Our business hours are Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. If you would like to leave a message on our voicemail system, please give your name, phone number, and a brief description of your situation after the beep. For El Spanish O, dial 1 now. El Spanish O? Hmm. Dark Spud. He's like Batman if he were a potato, but less intelligent and far less graceful. His girlfriend is like a box of chocolates. You never know 
what you're gonna get. And his arch enemy is Chaos's ugly cousin. Don't call me ugly, Heath. <laughs> um, I, I was talking a hammer, a magic lasso, cell phone? Seriously, have you like completely run out of ideas? He woke with a start. Confusion gripped him at first, but then a sense of familiarity as he realized it had happened again. Darn local punks had snuck in while he was sleeping and duct taped his lips to the dashboard. Third time this week. Gotta talk to the doc about reducing the dosage on those pills. He peeled himself from the naga hide, realizing at least half of his mustache was never coming back. Chills ran up his spine as he read the obit. Local author Preston Dipstick was found in the early hours this morning, dead of unknown causes. He was wearing a clown suit. In his pocket was found a cryptic note that simply read, Pablo must die. Mr. Dipstick's longtime friend and frequent relative, Amy Koshiara, told reporters, he didn't even know a Pablo. He just carried that around so if he ever died mysteriously, it would seem even mysteriouser. Mrs. Kochiara later confessed to being a little piqued because she had sent the author a box of rubber chickens recently and he had never thanked her for it. A bloody knife was also found at the scene, but has not been tied to the crime. The medical examiner, P. Bunyan Smythe, said, He seemed to be in robust health for his age. And Mr. Dipstick's personal physician, Dr. Lyle Riverwidener, said he had no idea what could have caused his death. He adamantly refused to let me check his colon, though he did give me a peek at his semicolon. It looked fine. The ME said he hoped the autopsy would reveal something, though he was concerned that all of the knife wounds may have obliterated any evidence. Police have hit the local clown population hard with questions. It's always easy to bring the clowns downtown, said Officer Don Yutz. We don't even need the paddy wagon. We can get like 40 of them into a Volkswagen Beetle. So how's the book coming? Really good. The words are just pouring out. Awesome. What's it about? No idea. No idea? Not a clue. I've seen things, man. Heavy things. Imagine being in the gym after a good workout. You turn around and there's Hero Sandwich and the only thing he has on is the radio. All that meat and cheese. Sounds terrifying. This one time, I was at the frantic foursomes tower when one of Silly Putty's experiments went wrong. Turned all the appliances inside out. I knew their fridge. Preston. Preston. Preston was good people. A shame. And of course, that battle between Squash and Arm and Hammer. You were there for that? Front and center. Come down here, box man. Squash will. Uh. Squash! Pace Barlet, thou art a stench upon this fair city. And Arm and Hammer knoweth how to deal with stench. Bah! 
Thou wilt face the wrath of a soda gone mad. Are you listening? By Odin's hoary nether regions, put it down that bus. Ow! Ooh! Ow! Ow! Ooh! Oh! Oh! Owlith! Owlith! Well, you know how that all turned out. Yeah, I hear Armin is learning to talk again, though. It's encouraging. have quite an imagination. There has never been a worse time to be a smoker. First we have smoking sections, then we lose them, then we get vapor cigarettes and can smoke indoors again. And now that's been taken away. I can't even sneak in the bathroom and work and vape anymore. Oh, but now there's something you can sneak in the bathroom and do. Try Skull's new smokeless suppositories. Just a pinch between the cheeks and <laughs> And these are the sounds of mating rituals between sheep and lions. Hey, Billy Joe Bob, you ever have that not-so-fresh feeling? Oh, well, I've just thanked for that, Jethro. Try New Man Ponds, absorbent enough for a woman, made for a man. I do believe I never felt so fresh. New Greer Aspirin. Use of this product may cause genital warts, loss and or shrinkage of your man junk, translucent blue urine, rectum malfunction, including uncontrollable flagellants and sudden explosive diarrhea. Dr. David Bixby, transmorphic scientist, experiments with gamma rays. But something goes wrong. Now, when Dr. Bixby becomes angry, or constipated, a startling metamorphosis occurs as he turns into an enormous brain rage monster. <laughs> the creature is driven by rage and a desire to find a soothing laxative, and pursued by an investigative reporter. Mr. Stanley, don't bother me when I'm constipated. You wouldn't like me when I'm constipated. The creature is wanted for a murder he didn't commit. David Bixby is believed to be dead, and he must let the world believe that he is dead, until he can learn to control the enormous green rage monster within. <laughs> I love this show. There he goes again, right on time. What do you mean? Well, pretty much every time, say 20 minutes into the show, he gets all green and starts flexing. Next thing you know, Tosses the bad guy into a bunch of boxes. Grabs him by the collar and the belt loop. Tosses him into boxes. So? So? These guys have made a choice to live a life of crime. 
they suddenly decide to stop being jerks because they got tossed into a pile of boxes? Hey, what are you in for? Oh, I kidnapped a young girl, stole her inheritance, and attempted to kill her gardener, David something. Oh, so what happened? I got tossed into some boxes. Decided to give it up. Right. I saw him toss the bad guy into some bushes once. But that's not the point. Seriously. How does getting tossed change your paradigm so completely? And where are all these boxes coming from? Was everyone in the process of moving back in the 70s? It just seems kind of formulaic and a little insulting. One time I saw him toss the bad guy into a pool. Oh, for crap. You know what? Never mind. It'll happen again next time we watch it. I wonder what he'll toss the bad guy into this time. A fiver says, into boxes. Oh, no bet. <laughs> you know, he kind of reminds me of Squash. That's another thing. These guys got no imagination. They're always ripping off other people's characters. Mr. Stan Lee, don't bother me when I'm constipated. You wouldn't like me when I'm constipated. Well, here's a new Skull Smokeless Suppository. It might help. <coughs> Excelsior! That's it. I'm done being a reporter. I'm going to try something new. Maybe I'll write comic books. Well, Mr. Spud, I have to say, we've looked at your tests and you have a bilirubin count of over 7,000. Wow. What'll that do? We have no idea. No one's ever seen one that high. Suffice it to say, you should be the color of a yellow highlighter right now. We're also a bit concerned with your MRI. Oh, great. What does that show? Well, it seems you have no organs. No organs? It could be worse. How could it be worse? It could be happening to me. Also, your triglycerides are through the roof. Have you by any chance been drinking mayonnaise smoothies? No, but that sounds good. So, what do we do next? I'd like to take an EKG. Okay, but afterwards, could you leave the little metal nipples stuck to me? I use them to pick up freaky girls at the club later. I just threw up a little. Yep, that's vomit. Mr. Spud, what brings you here in the first place? My back is throbbing. I don't know why. You treat it like fine china. Hey, that was meant hurtfully, wasn't it? 
What exactly do you do for a living? He's a crime fighter. Crime fighter? Well, yeah. Why do you think I wear a mask? I just assumed you were embarrassed. Embarrassed? Of what? I'm gonna write you a script. One mirror, used twice daily. Hey, is there any way you can put me into the one of those medically induced comas? You could give me a full makeover while I'm under. Um, that's known as malpractice. Just a little nip and tuck, facelift, some light suction, straighten my nose a bit, adjust my hairline, maybe, oh, maybe some of those implants to give me better pecs and shoulders, enhance my buns a little while you're at it. My teeth could use a good going over. That's not a makeover, that's taxidermy. Could this be the end of Starchy the Dark Spud? Oh, will someone shut him up? Grim Defender of Alphabet City? Shut. Has he come to his last moments? Shut. Tune in next week. Sh same Spud time, same Spud channel. Meanwhile, at the secret lair of the Clown Crime join. Syndicate, Cheddar Jack, Caesar Salad, Heat Bar, and Rep Scallion consider Lil' Mr. Puddin for membership. I want to join. 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 Well, I vote we kill him. I don't know. Um, he is distracting. Sure, he's distracting. But you can't tell me you're actually considering him for the Syndicate. He's wearing braces for crying out loud. You're talking to Heathpar about braces. Heath doesn't even comb his hair. Yeah, well, you paint over your mustache. Look, even if we don't let him join, we need to let his girlfriend join. Trust me, I've seen her. Oh, you are beautiful. And you are? Sid. Definitely. Hardly. Oh, I'm quite sure. <laughs> That's my name, actually. Hardly Sin. That's a bit of a oxymoron, don't you think? <laughs> and how may I help you, Mrs. Sin? And what is that thing you have in the cage? I want to join! I want to join! Oh, that's my little puddin. I heard you might have an opening in your clown syndicate. And I think you'd be a perfect little addition. I'm not sure if the little guy is uh, syndicate material. Oh, but I'll make it worth your while. You see, I can deliver the spud to you. I'm listening. You boys have it all wrong. You keep trying to trap him. But he's so clumsy, he trips over your traps before he's even in them. God chooses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. I'll show you how to trap him using his own weaknesses against him. 
Then would you consider my little pudding for a membership? It was her trap. Finally caught the spud. I want to join. I want to join. I want to join. Is he just going to run around in circles like that? I want to join. I want to join. I want to join. He's giving me a headache. Oh, for crying out. Damn. Wrong gun. Just as well. You have no sense of theatricality, Jack. Uh, he has a gun with a bang flag, so... A gun lacks imagination. We need to strap him into some elaborate death trap in a colorful room that sits at an odd angle. <laughs> you always try that, even that ridiculous... Ridiculous mass potato manages to escape from those. I have to admit that last trap was pretty foolproof. Chained to a conveyor and brought through dicers and mashers into the fryer and finally direct to the dinner table of two hungry Irishmen. Then how did he escape? How did you escape, Starch? Well... I was creeping along the dicers. I don't know why Caesar salad always makes this death trap so slow. Could this be the end of Starchy the Dark Spud, grim defender of Alphabet City? Has he come to his last moments? Oh, for fuck's sake, do you ever stop? They obviously weren't my last moments, or I wouldn't be standing here telling the story. Tune in next week. Same Spud time. Same Spud channel. And they, why would they have to tune in next week? They don't have to tune in next week. If you'll just shut up, I'll tell them what happened, like, right now. Uh, who are you talking to? Uh, it's the voices again. Okay. You were saying? And out of the corner of one of my eyes, I see someone hit the stop button. It was Heath Bar. He said... You? I don't want to kill you. You're a greater agent of chaos than I am. Can you imagine? <laughs> How could a crime fighter cause more chaos than a criminal? I ask myself that every time you go on patrol. Well, what'd you think my shirt met, you weirdo? I hear tell that you're holding tryouts for membership in the Clown Syndicate. I have the sinister power you need to make you the most deadly and feared syndicate in the world. Behold, the irresistible evil power that is dollar-wise, the dancing clown. Well, the boss had gas and it smelled so bad that I think he gave me cancer. Dog done died and the truck broke down. God bless Texas. I said, God bless Texas. Right gun. Ah, ah, ah. Ah.